guys, welcome back to another movie review. Welcome back to my uh, continuing reviews of the franchise Friday the 13th. Yes, uh, this movie I am on now is Freddy vs. Jason. Um, this movie was released on August 15, 2003. It had a $30 million budget and it made $114.9 million at the box office. This movie received mixed reviews with critics. Currently holds a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb, a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 91% on Google. And Cinema Score gave this a grade of a B plus on an A plus to F grade scale. This movie was directed by Ronnie Yu and written by Damian Shannon and Mark Swift. Uh, this movie stars Robert England, Ken Kurtzinger. Monica Keenan, Kelly Rowland, Jason Ritter, Brandon Fletcher, and uh, Catherine Isabella. Now, this movie is something we've been wanting for a long time. As fans of both franchises, we couldn't wait for this epic showdown, and we finally get it. And, spoiler alerts if you haven't seen the movie, but there have been spoiler alerts for all these reviews. So, don't watch the reviews until you watch the movies. But let's get into this. Freddy Krueger, he has been forgotten uh, from the people on Elm Street. And he's looking for a way for them to remember and to fear him. So he awakens or summons Jason from the grave and sends him to Elm Street to make them fear Freddy again. But what Freddy doesn't know is he just unleashed a killing machine and Freddy will have a hard time trying to shut him down so Freddy could uh, rule again. And they have an epic battle in the third act of this movie. But uh, there is Jason, he's on Elm Street, and he goes after these kids. And of course, there's always a douchebag in the movie. And uh, uh, the douchebag's name, I have a hard time remembering who it is, but he uh, is dating Gib, uh, who is played by um, Catherine Isabella. And you know, Catherine Isabella, uh, she reminds me of one of my friends um, who I used to work with, uh, Tabitha Duncan. Uh, just her her facial features. Uh, remind me so much of her and uh, yeah and her uh, her attitude too I, I think they're both similar but he goes after this group specifically uh, and coincidentally the house that he goes after is a house that was previously attacked um, with Freddy Krueger and upon seeing this on the news Jason Ritter who plays Will uh, and his buddy Mark who are locked up because they are some of the kids who wouldn't stop dreaming and keeps bringing Freddy back. So what they did was they had this pill called Hypnosil and they were taking these uh, pills to suppress their dreams so they won't remember. That's how they were able to beat Freddy. But with Jason back and causing all this trouble, people think it's Freddy. And so he starts to gain his strength and uh, uh, Trent, I believe the kid's name is. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he's a big douchebag. And his kill in this movie is my favorite. Um, De uh, Gib is in the uh, uh, shower after they had sex. And uh, he's laying there on the bed. He turns over. And Jason's just standing there. He just continuously just jabs him in the back with a uh, long blade and then he takes the bed and folds it in half and basically he's turned into a, a freaking pretzel and uh, uh, and then for some reason Jason leaves and that's not normally what, what Jason does but in, in, in this case I guess it's uh, what they wanted normally he would he would have killed Deb too or Deb Gib too, and uh, but for some reason he did this the one, 
Um, maybe Freddie had that control room at the time. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. So, we move on. And Mark and Will break out of that uh, asylum where they're staying. And they want to warn them that it's um, Freddy Krueger that is the one they should worry about. But they don't know about Jason until an officer comes by, uh, Stubbs. Uh, now, I know who he is. I've seen him in a lot of movies. But Stubbs basically tells them about Jason and why he's back and, and everything. But the one scene that cracks me up in this movie is when they're out in the field, they're having that uh, rave, and the two guys <coughs> pour the alcohol on him and set him on fire. Um, well, his buddy does. The other one <coughs> uh, pokes Jason in the chest and says, this is an invite only, and you weren't invited, uh, corn poke. And Jason just snaps his head around. Uh, that's pretty sweet. But the other guy sets him on fire, and he's running through the field as Jason's on fire. And you can you can see that the kid had a mouthful of blood when Jason goes to throw the knife, and he spits it out. But what I don't get is, some of the kids stick around and want to take on Jason, and he's just freaking carving him up left and right. And, uh, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that scene cracked me up. But um, this is what it is. is um, Freddy can't shut Jason down. And so he finally gets uh, Jason in a dream. And he does that by shooting him up with all these drugs. So he'll go to sleep. And he tries to shut the big boy down, but it doesn't work. Because Jason doesn't die. Um, but he almost gets him, because Jason's afraid of water, he uses that and it turns him back to, into a kid. And he goes to poke him in his uh, side of his head with one of his blades. And then Jason wakes up. And, uh, uh, and actually, uh, not only is he awake and he's back at the camp, but uh, the lady, Lori, she goes under and pulls Freddy out into Jason's world. And then they have a big ass battle at the end of the movie. And it is sweet. I love, love that scene. Is it over the top? Yeah, it's over the top. But I love it. I love when Freddy uh, says, uh, man, the torpedoes. And he starts flicking the ends off. And they shoot at Jason. And yeah, they they do great. Uh, uh, especially Freddy. Now, one other thing that pissed me off about this movie is... They didn't have Kane Hodder as Jason. And this is no offense or nothing against Ken Kurzinger, but he sucked. He he was, he is the worst Jason in the franchise. And even though he's tall, but he's tall and slinky, and he was in like some like sweatpants and I just he was just a goofy Jason. And uh, I really wish they would have had Kane Hodder do the movie. They don't make no sense when you have Robert England doing Freddy Krueger, but you're not going to have Kane Hodder, who's done four in the franchise. Uh, that really irritated me, and it pissed. It really upset uh, Kane Hodder as well. You know, I think he should have been first. First, have been asked, but you know, that's Hollywood for you. But overall, we got what we wanted out of this movie, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, this is a go-to movie I watch at least once a year, sometimes more. And uh, yeah, I really want a sequel, or I want another where it's, it's Michael versus Jason, or uh, how about uh, Chucky versus the Leprechaun? Uh, that would be pretty sweet. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the Leprechaun movies, you put them two against each other, I think that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, but other than that, in the comment section below, tell me, did you like this movie? Uh, did you hate it? Let me know. Um, and do you think K 
Ken Kernsinger did a good job, or do you think someone else should have played Jason like I do? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's talk movies. I love talking movies. I will be talking about TV shows uh, when it gets closer to the uh, new season for them to start. And uh, yeah, uh, with that, I'm going to give Freddy vs. Jason an 8 out of 10. So yeah, very, very good. I'm really glad and happy what we got. Uh, there were some minor falls and things I didn't like, but at the end of the day, they can't all be perfect. So, other than that, I thank you guys for watching this movie review, and I'll see you guys for my final Friday the 13th movie review, which will be Friday the 13th from 2009. So, till then, I thank you for watching, and check you later.